Hi, welcome to session three uh, on how to read the Bible. And we're going to be covering the New Testament. Uh, which is following the Old Testament. When Jesus arrives on the scene, this is again 400 years after a prophetic famine where God kind of pulls himself away from his people and um, brings Christ into the picture. And he comes right at the most opportune time. Uh, what's happening in Rome at the time that the New Testament surfaces is everybody in Rome speaking the same language, transportation has become a little bit different and easier and um, there's world peace so you know there's really nothing in the way of Christ's coming other than the conflict with Herod and you know him being king and him being jealous of Jesus and so uh, as you read you'll see those conflicts arise but as a whole in the world things are going really really good and um, the layout for the New Testament goes like this. So at the beginning of the New Testament, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are called the Gospels. And the reason why they're called the four Gospels is because they're the good news. It's the great news of the New Testament because Jesus comes to fulfill this new agreement with the people and cleanse us of our sins. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the Synoptic Gospels. What that means is Matthew, Mark, and Luke are all basically the same story told by different people. And then John is 30 years after their story and he elaborates on Christ's coming from the very beginning to the end. And so just isolating those four Gospels, I'm going to break down kind of what they contain a little bit so that when you dive in and you read, you have a really good understanding of what you're reading. And the reason why I want to do that for you is if you are new to reading the Bible, I tell everybody, start with the Gospels get to know the Lord, get to know who the Holy Spirit is, because it's through your Savior and through the Holy Spirit that enables you to read the Bible as a whole. So out of the four Gospels, I tend to send everybody to John because he's easy to really understand. And, um, and I also like how he portrays Jesus because all four of the Gospels portray him in a different way because the writer's personality also comes out in the book. So um, John um, portrays Jesus as an eagle, you know, that he's, um, he's an evangelist. He goes out from place to place and he evangelizes. And, you know, he carries out his signs, his wonders and miracles. And um, and then we have um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which were the first three, uh, the synoptic. And Matthew, he is very organized in his book. Uh, he used to be a tax collector, so his book is very orderly. And um, he portrays Jesus as king. Um, as as a lion. So Matthew portrays him as a lion. John portrays him as an evangelist like an eagle. And then Mark, he portrays Jesus as a suffering servant. And his book actually carries the most healings out of the four Gospels. I think there's um, 19 healings recorded in his book. And he kind of portrays Jesus as a suffering servant. And then we have Luke, and Luke was a physician, and he portrays Jesus, you know, as um, the giver of the Holy Spirit, of course, and saving us from our sins, but he also uh, really um, hones in on his signs, his wonders, his miracles, and how the disciples can also carry them out, and he... Um, portrays him as the savior of the world to which he is. So we have Matthew who portrays Jesus as a lion, as a king. Mark who portrays him as a servant. Luke portrays him as a savior. And John portrays him as an eagle. 
And then we move in to the book of Acts. Acts was also written by Luke, who was a great physician. And in the book of Acts, uh, it talks about the acts of the disciples. Now, this book is really, really uh, important to study too, especially if you want to be a follower of Jesus, because when you follow the characteristics of his disciples and what they were able to do with the power of the Holy Spirit, what happened in the book of Acts then takes place on earth now. And, you know, a lot of people might not agree with that, but that's the Bible. That's scripture. There's nothing different happening now. Um, God is the same. He instills the same gifts, talents um, into his people. He instills the gift of healing. And in fact, um, it says uh, in the book of Mark, those who lay hands um, on one another and pray, they, they will recover. They will be healed. So, there are people that are walking around that are appointed and anointed because they are walking in righteousness and right standing with the Father. And um, so the book of Acts is awesome because it, it teaches you how to um, get into the Word, get into Christ, and get Spirit-filled. Get His Holy Spirit in you because that's what you want. You want salvation. You want to know that you're safe and secure in Him. And, you know, seek right standing with him because all things are added to you who do that. And not just to, to get something from him, but he does a lot for us. He left his throne from heaven to come to save us. And that's really significant. So, um, so Luke wrote Acts. And then following Acts, we have the epistles. Um... So we have Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and so on. And all of these books are called the epistles. And they are the letters that were written by uh, mostly Paul, but not all of them. Some of the letters are written to an individual, and a lot of them are written to churches. And what these letters contain... Um, they would they would backslide you know paul would set up a site he would set up a church and then he would leave and he would find out from other people that these people start backsliding they start getting back into their old ways um they bring idol worship into a, the play and many of the things that are happening in these epistles that paul goes back and writes these letters to correct are happening in the world today there's a lot to learn from reading these epistles because one of the number one things that keep happening from the beginning of time all the way to the end of the New Testament is idol worship. Now, one might think that idol worship is, you know, building a figurine and sitting there and, and worshiping that figure who really has nothing to offer you, but idol worship really what it boils down to is anything that you are putting um, before God all the time, neglecting coming to him. I had one person tell me one time, which I thought it was a really, really great uh, analogy, was you, you'll know what your idol is when you look at where you spend all your money. And I thought, wow, you know, it's true. Wherever we spend all of our time and our money and our focus and our, our focus and first, for, first and foremost, he says, seek ye first the kingdom and all things will be added unto you. All things will be added unto you. And so um, we definitely want to be doing that. So we have um, the four gospels. Then we have the book of Acts. We have the epistles. Then we have um, the remaining letters. We have First and Second Thessalonians, um, First and Second Timothy, and Titus. And uh, Timothy and Titus were co-laborers with Paul, and they were like his right hand. Um, he had a lot of trust, a lot of faith in them, and they go out because. Um, the churches in Corinth and in Ephesus, they start to forget that they are walking in grace and they start to instill old law, old Jewish law from um, Old Testament. And they were bringing in the wrath of God and not the grace of God. And then we have uh, the book of Revelation that deals with, it's a 
the, it deals with prophecy, it deals with end times, but it also deals, it's a prophetic book. So it actually deals with things that happened in the past in the spirit realm. And um, there's some hidden secrets in there that I'm going to share with you next week regarding Christmas of things that happen in the spirit realm. So you don't want to miss that. Um, and let me see if I missed anything. I want to make sure that I shared with you. Um, so it's really important, you know, if you want to start reading the Bible, the four gospels in the New Testament that I told you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, start with Luke, start with John. And, you know, I'm just going to encourage you that God is seeking you. He is hungry for you and he loves you very much, no matter where you are at this point in time in your life, no matter how far you may have strayed, he loves you and he's waiting and he's patient. And, you know, I just want to pray over you. And if you want to pray to yourself with me or pray out loud, if you want to receive the gift of salvation and you want to receive the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can walk in righteousness with God and have a lamp lit beneath your feet like never before um, and you want to accept the Lord into your heart um, just repeat this after me um, Heavenly Father I come to you in Jesus name I come to you with full repentance of my sins I acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God and that he is my Savior I dedicate my life to him and I welcome him into my heart and I am heaven bound in Jesus name. Amen. Congratulations. And if you said that prayer, um, just leave a comment in the comments and say saved because we love to hear the good news. And I hope these videos were helpful to you and I will catch you all next week and we're going to reveal some um, of the Christmas story. Take care. Bye.